So you want to get up and running with GitHub. Perhaps you know what it is, you feel like you should be using it, but maybe you don't have any code to commit to GitHub, you don't have any big coding projects that you're working on, or maybe you're not familiar with Git, which is the language often used to interact with GitHub. If that's heading home with you, then I've got good news. In this video, I'm going to show you everything you need to know to get up and running with GitHub, start committing on a daily basis. We'll learn a bit about GitHub, we'll learn that it's more than actually just a place to store all of your code, it has myriad uses, and we'll also also learn some practices you can use to start committing code on a regular basis so that you can paint that activity tracker all different shades of green. My name is James and I've taught thousands of people how to code on this channel. If you're new here smash the subscribe button as I upload new videos every single week. So before we dive into how you can get up and running with GitHub we're first just going to take a look at what it is and I'm going to show you what I use it for because it might help to give you some inspiration. This is my profile here the link to it is in the description down below if you want to check it out and if you do give us a follow there's lots of great code repositories on here that you can use for all sorts of cool stuff. Basically here we have a little bio and a readme.md and in essence we can just think about GitHub as a cloud storage system for code related topics. Just in the same way we have Google Drive and we can save documents there, we can save PDFs, we can save files and then we can view them and interact with them. GitHub is exactly the same. So the way that everything is organized in GitHub is via repositories. So here we can see that I have 192 of them. There's basically one for every project that I have. If we click on this one just here, learn to code, it's going to show us the code base that I have for my learn to code roadmap. You might be familiar with it. Basically it's this website right here where if you click on the roadmap, this is the roadmap that a lot of you might be familiar with. So all of that is saved in the cloud and I make regular commits to this. I push new code changes to it whenever I update the code on my local computer and it's super useful because whenever changes get pushed to the GitHub repository I've got it set up so that the new code automatically redeploys and my website my live website is updated. Now that's just one example of how you can use GitHub for code bases you could also use it in a collaborative environment where you can have different branches where people can work in parallel on the same code base without turning everything into an absolute mess. Now while it's useful for storing all of my code we can also use it as a way to present information for example here I have a readme.md file which is a markdown file Markdown is a formatting language for writing documents. It's absolutely brilliant. If you want to learn more about it, I recommend checking out the link in the description. There's a video on that. I use it all the time and basically we can use it as a viewer for different documents. So that's super convenient. And here I also have the notes. They're all written inside of a markdown format. So I could come into the HTML and CSS notes and GitHub has a markdown parser so that it can basically present all of that markdown information looking all nice, neat, and formatted. So there's absolutely loads of things you can do with GitHub, and if you don't have one, I'd absolutely recommend creating an account today. Doesn't matter if you're a hobbyist developer or if you're a full-time software developer. Now, if you've looked at the Git and GitHub notes that I have on my website, you'll know that there's two main ways we can interact with GitHub. One is by using the command language called Git, and Git itself essentially just breaks down into a whole lot of commands that you can use to create, read, update, and delete versions of your code base. Now in this video we're not going to be learning Git. If you have the time I'd absolutely recommend picking it up, but if you're brand new like I was originally, there's actually a much easier way to get up and running with GitHub, and that's via the Git or GitHub GUI or the desk user interface. The link for this will be in the description down below, but if you come over and install GitHub Desktop, this is what I started off using instead of learning Git. I only picked it up after I'd been programming for about six months, and if you download this to your computer, it's going to give you an interface that you can used to communicate all of your local code changes and basically save them in the cloud very effectively. Here we can see an example of what GitHub desktop looks like. Basically we authenticate it with our GitHub account and then we can create a repository. We add a project code. So if you already have a project or something that you're coding, you can click add existing repository. You can search all of your local folders, add that folder, and then just turn it into a Git repo. And if I open this example up right here, game dev, this is where I keep notes about games that I'd like to develop in future. If I make some changes to this file and save it, we can see that these changes are read into the GitHub GUI right here. I can then commit those changes and if they are committed, I can push them to the origin and they are then saved in the cloud database of GitHub. So GitHub desktop is an absolute essential if you don't know Git and you're wanting to get up and running with GitHub. Now, as I showed earlier, we can save big code bases to our 
GitHub and we can manage them via GitHub desktop and that's all very nice. But what if you don't have any big code bases that you're working on, but you really want to get up and running with GitHub so that you can start building up activity, getting familiar with it and really start to develop your profile. Well, this is where it's important to understand that there are actually numerous ways that you can use GitHub when you're learning to code or just getting started. And the recommendation I'm going to make if you want to start using GitHub, but you don't have any big code bases is to start note taking in GitHub. The viewer is absolutely brilliant. So I write out all of these notes in Markdown on my local computer. I'll show you what that looks like in a second. And now I have these absolutely brilliant notes that you and I can go to and reference at any time in the future. Now, obviously these exact notes are available in my website as well, but we can see how nicely they are presented in here and I can jump to different ones and I've got an absolutely awesome catalog of everything I need to know about coding. And this is something you can totally do when you're learning to code as well. If you wanted to see what these HTML and CSS notes look like inside of a code base, here we have the actual code for them. Once again, this is the Markdown syntax language. And if you want to pick it up, it's so easy. I totally recommend it. There's a link to a tutorial in the description down below. And if you want to get started taking notes and having the ultimate catalog of everything you need to know, which is an absolutely brilliant thing to do if you're learning, basically what we're going to do is we're going to, from the GitHub desktop, click here, click add and hit add existing repo. We're then going to choose a repo and in here, this is the folder I have all of my project directories. We're going to create a new folder and call it dev notes. From there, you can just hit open and then you'll be prompted with a button that says create a repository here instead. After that, you'll really want to hit initialize this repo with a readme and you can give it a description. For example, this is everything I have learned to date. You don't have to worry about the git ignore unless you have any information you want to keep private. And then you just hit create repo. After that, we can now publish the repo. I'm going to make this public so that everyone can see it. And once that's published, we can hit open that in VS code. That's going to pop up a window for us. And basically we see that in here, we have the readme.md file in addition to a git attributes, which you don't need to worry about. Now in here, what I'd recommend you do is keep a log. So this could be, instead of it just being dev notes, you could have, this is my developer log. And then what you can do using the markdown syntax, so if we have the pound or the double pound that creates different tiers of headers, I could have uh, dev logs right here. And then I could have one, for example, that says 2024-02-27. And this could just be some notes to myself where I say made a video about how to use GitHub. If I go ahead and save that and come back to our dev notes, we can see those changes have been recognized. But what I could also do that I'd recommend you do is create a new folder, call it notes and start making some files where if you find a good process, you find a topic that you want to learn about, make an html.markdown or whatever that file might be. And in here, make some notes for that. So I could have the title HTML, I could have how it works, and under here, I could say HTML stands for hypertext markup language. Now, if I once again, come back to my GitHub desktop, it can see that I've added this file and now I can create a commit note. I could say added notes folder. If I hit commit to main and then push to origin. Now, when I come into GitHub, I can see that I've got contributions in my activity log for the 27th of February. We've got three contributions. I can click on them. We can see that I've got this dev notes repo. And down here we can see this is my dev log, which is super cool. And then if we come into the notes file, I've got everything I could ever want to remember or all the study notes that I may have made whilst learning to code. Not to mention that they're all amazingly formatted if you do understand how to use Markdown appropriately. And just like that, you have a system that you can use to effectively start developing your GitHub profile from the day you start your coding journey. Obviously, this is just one example of how you could use GitHub. There are numerous ways you could go about it. But once again, if you don't know Git, if you don't have any massive code projects that you want to add yet, but you still want to start developing your profile, then this is absolutely how I'd recommend that you go about it. As always, if you've enjoyed the video, smash the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you guys so much for watching. Love that support and I'll catch you later. Peace. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the learn to code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.